I'm Jeffrey Brown of the PBS NewsHour, and I'm joined now by Maria Semple, whose forthcoming book, so forthcoming we don't have it in our hands, right, mm -hmm. is called Today Will Be Different. And she is best known to date for the novel Where'd You Go, Bernadette. Welcome to you. Thank you. So, what can you tell us about this new novel that I do not have in my hands and have not been able to read? <laughs> it, it's called Today Will Be Different, and it takes place in one day, yeah. and it starts with an incantation of a woman who says, today will be different. Today I will be the best version of myself I know how to be. Today I will initiate sex with my husband. I will play a board game with my child. I will shop local. And it's a very she's got simple. A whole, she's got a plan. She has a very, very modest plan, yeah, let's say, yeah, that she set the bar yeah. very she's low changing, for herself. Right. We're not talking about changing the world today, <laughs> but I no. will be in control of various yes, things. Yes, and here. I will try to not yeah. leave the world in a worse place than I found it. And I will just try to, to treat people with basic dignity and comport myself in, in not a totally embarrassing way. And, and my sense is that it does not uh, come about. It does not come about. Despite her valiant efforts, she tries very hard and then life happens and everything comes unraveled. Did, it sounds like even as you're telling me that you had some fun uh, imagining what a perfect day could be and then how it could all go awry. Very much so, and I, I had a lot of fun with, you know, keeping it really small because it takes place in a day, and so kind of the narrative solutions were always to go smaller, to go smaller, to go smaller, and it was, it's just fun, and I think that it, I think there's a lot of very relatable stuff in it. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, it's like what what would a really horrible thing for me to happen on a small scale? It would be that I drop my kid off to school right. and. I think I have seven hours free, and cue the banjo getaway music, <laughs> and then the phone rings, come and pick up your kid, she's sick, you know? And yeah. so then it's like, oh, just a simple thing like that, where you think you have your day to yourself, and now you have your kid with you, you know? And, and, that, and so it's very simple things like that. Um, yeah, I mean, it's irresistible to ask if this is, if this is sort of you, uh, your life thinking about, why aren't I not better, better control of, every hour or Very every day. much so, or, yeah. or, I, or I, I would say it's why aren't I happier when no. I have all the elements. I have an abundance of, of reasons to be happy. Yeah. I have abundance, I have all the tools required to be a happy person, mm -hmm. and yet I get in my own way. And it was really, it's a source of actually quite deep suffering, you know, when you think why, yeah. and it, it's, you know, lying in bed at night and going through the day and I should have been kinder to that person, or right. why didn't right. I take an extra five minutes or when my daughter said will you play clue with me why did I say no and then just go on TMZ online or some awful thing you know right, and those right. kind of micro transactions that can oh. have, make you feel like you've you've um, you you've you lead a meaningful existence that yeah. really um, you feel like you're the better version of yourself or that you've just wasted this precious thing called life well, this is it taking a quick turn, this conversation, because we started <laughs> laughing about how everything can fall apart, but it comes from a, a deeper place, right? Very much so, yes. Yeah. And, 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 and I think that, that what I'm hoping that the book does is, is that it, it, there's real pain in the book, but there's some great comedy and, and it's, a, it's a wild ride. It's yeah. really fun and it's really tight, you know, and you don't know what's going to happen next. A lot of very strange things happen in it. There's a real plot, you know, which is my, I think the thing almost I take the most pride in is that the, the kind of degree of difficulty, if you're having a book take place over the course of a day, the highest degree of difficulty is to have like a real plot you can follow without it being like you know, diffusing a nuclear bomb in the course mm -hmm. of a day. Like mm -hmm. this is just a very small scale, you know, small look look at one life. Yeah. But I think it's it's compelling and it goes deep and it's it's crazy. Now I know that you worked for years as a television writer. Yes. I don't know. Was the plan always to write novels, or was it an accident, or how how did you make the switch? 
Well, I was always a huge reader, and I uh, went to Barnard. I was you were an English a huge reader major. Even as a girl, and yes, as a girl, yeah. and I was an English major in college. And then when I was in TV, all I did was read books. And and in TV, I would really get disgusted by the. You'd sit around in the morning, and you would talk about, oh, what was on Everybody Loves Raymond, or Friends, or Murphy Brown, and they'd yeah. all sit and talk about it. When I go, I think like, ugh, that's TV. Like I'm reading books. Books, Even you while know? you were doing it, Very you were thinking, so. oh, that's TV. Yeah, I just yeah. felt like it was TV and it was fun and it was a set of challenges and yeah. I was good at it and I liked the camaraderie of the writer's table. Yeah. And I, but, but I do think that the strength of, of my contribution always was about bringing my real life to the the writing room, you yeah. know, and to always. To the television, I mean, even comedy, whatever, that you were bringing in some. Absolutely, and yeah. it was like, oh, I had a fight with my boyfriend, and this was the fight. And, yeah. and I, I can't tell you the number of times that I would show up just telling a story that happened, and people going, we're doing a show about that, I'm doing a show. I still get calls from people who say, don't kill us, we're doing a show about that story you told us 10 years ago, oh, I, you know, oh, that I happened. Oh, I they were going to say, they still call you and say, what, what happened to you today? Is Tell us so we can do a story, a show about <laughs> no, it. Yeah. They're still working through my old stories. <laughs> okay. Yes, okay, yes. you gave them so many. Yeah. Exactly, and so, um, and I always felt like what, the, the solution to any problem is always what would really happen, what really, it, it's the solution to the to a little story problem isn't, oh, then someone gets famous, or then someone right. ends up on the jumbotron. It's like, it's always about, oh, they forgot their keys, <laughs> right. or, you know, then the... <laughs> they so got I, locked out of their house. Exactly, and, <laughs> and then, and that's what I thought is, I would always go real, and, and yeah. so, so I never thought that I could write novels, because to me, writing novels was like up there. Yeah. It was just in this other plane. Yeah. And I never felt I was worthy of it. I felt other people write novels, I'm just this crappy TV writer. Well, so conversely, did did writing television help you when you turned to novels, or did you just set it aside and put on that English lit hat that you yes. always had had? Well, that's interesting. That's a good question, because at first, I think, because of an ego and feeling like an imposter, I really tried to act like it, oh, it had nothing to do with me as mm -hmm. a writer. And now I think that I'm on my third book. I'm more comfortable. I think I'm finding myself more and more as a writer, I actually think that right now I, I'm more than ever grateful and aware of how much TV helped me. And I'll give you an example that just came a couple days ago. I was talking to someone and I was reading an arc and it was just that. It was just had way too many words and it mm -hmm. was just a long, it just was maybe 30% too long, this novel was. And what I realized was that when you write TV, mm. you you work for maybe, well, many months on a, on a script, you know, from the story to the outline to the script. But yeah. the script itself, you work very intensely during the week to get it ready for the show on Friday. And at some point during the week, you do this thing called a cut pass, yeah. which is everyone goes out with a 80 page script and you have to come back right. pitching cuts. You right. have to put the red box yeah, around yeah, yeah, yeah. it and the thing and you're- So and that's a real discipline, that's um, a real deadline. Yes, yeah, and yeah. it's a discipline and it's a deadline and it's a way that your brain works of saying, I can jump from that to that and it still makes sense and I've lost a page. Yeah. And that, I feel like that's in my DNA that I'm writing with, I've already internalized the cut pass, you know, when I'm yeah. writing in a book. Well, like that's I'm, good. Yeah, yeah, and I feel like my, I, I will say that my writing I think is quick and moves very quickly, yeah. it's very tight. And I really do think I got that from TV because you can't just spend, you know, 10 pages navel gazing in TV. It's boom, 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 you right. gotta make it happen. So, um, just come back in our last couple of minutes here to the new book. I'm thinking of the context of the last one of Where'd You Go, Bernadette, set very much in Seattle yes. as a place that I gather you had moved to. Indeed. Yeah, so is this one set there? I mean, is there the same sense of you know, of, of an where, yeah. Yes, it, it's another nut job woman in Seattle who happens to be my age. Yes, <laughs> running around causing trouble for the people in her life. So if you're asking if it's about that, yes, it is. Um, uh, coincidentally, yeah. uh, you, you, yeah. but you I mean, you're in. watching the um, a place change as well, or the, oh my the place is a character in a sense. Very much so, and yeah. and I wouldn't have known that I was a Seattle writer. And in fact, it's one of these things that's interesting. You talk about the, am I a TV writer? And at first yeah. I resisted it. With this new book, I thought, oh, if I write 
um, about Seattle, then I'll be a Seattle writer. And I don't know why, for some reason, I resisted that. And I thought, oh, I know, I'll just randomly set it in Chicago. But then I thought, wait, where I get my good stuff from is like the yeah. little minutia. And I don't yeah. know the minutia of Chicago. I know it in Seattle. So this is very much a Seattle book. And, uh, and it's not overly so, but you know, if you're going through the day on a small scale, it's going to come up, the mm -hmm. city, you know, mm -hmm. and the places in the city and getting around the city. Yeah. So it is, and I feel very, I, I feel very happy now and proud to be a Seattle writer. Like, let's just call it what it is. Call it what it is, yeah. go with it, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, coming in October, tomorrow will be different. Today but, will be different. I mean, today come will on, be different. don't give up on today. I'm sorry. <laughs> we still got today. Today will be different, <laughs> but not the way we intend, right? Exactly. <laughs> it will be different in a different way than All we right. originally Maria thought. Maria <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you.